Hey gang, we're in Knoxville, Tennessee right now and we are at Highland Memorial Cemetery. And I want to give a shout out to Deb, who's our ancestry friend who helps us get a lot of background on people. She gave me the tip off for the story. I did not know about the story of this World War II hero, a man who saved a lot of Jewish people. And it's really <laughs> all those, always the train. You gotta love it. A man who, like I said, a man who saved a lot of lives, a lot of Jewish lives, and we're gonna tell his story. His name was Roderick, Roderick Waring Edmonds. They called him Roddy. He was a master sergeant in World War II, so let's take a walk down the hill here, go to his grave, and I'm gonna tell you this amazing story of unparalleled bravery by this man. He was born here in Knoxville, Tennessee, South Knoxville. It's August 20th, 1919. Graduated from the high school here, Knoxville High School, 1938. And Roddy had three brothers. And World War II came along. So he did what many did. He did what two of his brothers did, is he enlisted in the Army. And on March 17, 1941, he found himself at Fort Oglethorpe. And he ended up becoming a Master Sergeant. And of course, like all the well, I should say many of the others, some went to the, the Pacific Theater, but he was sent to the European Theater to fight Germany and the Axis powers there, Italy, and he would find himself with the 106th Infantry Division, and he arrived there fresh, new, inexperienced with all the rest of those guys forming up, those American combat GIs, and they got to the combat zone there on December 10th. 1944, why do I say that? What's so important about that date? Well, it was only six days later that it was the Battle of the Bulge. And if you know anything about World War II, that was the big counteroffensive the Germans put out, Hitler's last gamble in the Ardennes, a surprise attack. And at first it was wildly successful. They were trying to encircle and cut off the Allies from Antwerp so they couldn't get supplies and they could. And it was more of a ploy to, really they, they didn't think they were gonna win the war at that point, but they could, they could enter peace negotiations. And it was some sick battle. Cold winter, the heaviest snows. Many of you know about the Band of Brothers story. Winters, all of them, Bastogne, all of that. That's all part of it. Well, they were only there five days and they got captured. I'm sure they were just getting ready to get, you know, they were just getting settled in and there were so many weak lines. And the, and the Ameri we were we were overconfident. So there were a lot of weak lines. But he, he was captured. And on December 19th, as I said, he was sent to a G uh, German POW camp. It was called Stalag 9B. And it was located southeast of the town of Bad Orb. I should say Bad Orb in Hesse, Germany. And it, was, it used to be a military training area before World War I, used by the Prussian army. But soon after, January 27th, he was transferred to another camp near Ziegenhain, and that was Stalag 9A. Well, it was the first day of camp. They're standing in the snow. They're freezing. They're wondering what's going on. And the commandant of that camp 
wanted to put on a little show. So what did he do? He got them all lined up in the snow and he got out a Russian prisoner and said, you all watch, anybody turns away, you're gonna get rifle butted or shot. So they all watch in horror as they executed this guy right in front of them all. If you do step out of line, you will also be shot. It was a threat. It was to try to intimidate them. And if they didn't need enough intimidation, they were treated to, you know, not as bad as the Japanese treated our soldiers, our prisoners of war, but, you know, they were pretty much being starved to death. And anyway, it was a pretty bad, a pretty bad deal there. Now, as the senior non-commissioned officer, Master Sergeant Edmonds was responsible for about 1,200, they say 1,275 American POWs. So the fateful morning comes and the Commandant decides he wants to separate all the Jews. He wanted to send them to the work camps, which meant certain death in the mines. So he calls the officers, including Master Sergeant Roderick Edmonds, and says, guys, um, when you form up tomorrow, we want to separate out the Jews. and want them to fall out. They go back to the barracks and Master Sergeant Old Roddy goes to his men and goes, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So everybody was following his leadership. And well, the next day they formed up and the order was given by the major that it was time to fall out. The signal was given and what happens? They all fell out. Now what's unbelievable is this major comes, the German major comes, he's like, he went nuts. He's like, of course he picks on Roddy, Master Sergeant Roddy, and he goes, you can't all be Jews. And he's like, we're all Jews here. And then it was a confrontation, pulled his Luger out, put it to his head. Roddy just sat there. His friend, standing right next to him, testified to all this and said, um, you better think about this. You're going to shoot me. You can shoot me. But you're going to have to shoot everybody because they're all witnesses, every single one of them. And after the war, you're going to pay. And that guy, he backed down. His arm came down. He didn't know what to do. He turned white. And all the men were like, holy cow. They all thought that was it. They all thought that was it. Master Sergeant was a goner. Wasn't to be the case. And there were no Jews taken. No Jews taken. Well, after all of that, things started to settle back down and the war ended and they got out of there. And basically, Master Sergeant Roderick Edmonds, his actions are credited with saving up to around 300 Jewish American soldiers from possible death. And now multiply that just by a few times and I would say today there are thousands, you know, with the kids and the grandkids. How many, how many people are alive today? So get this, out of a hundred days of captivity and Roddy came home, he came home here, he came home like everyone else and he kept the story to himself didn't tell anybody and it was only when his after I think it was after that he died that his mom gave the son his diary and his son started looking at it and said holy cow 
And then he contacted some of the other men who were still alive that were witnesses and said, is this true? And they're like, oh yeah, that was your dad. I was there. I saw it. So, you know, the word got around and most notably, there was a Jewish American POW serviceman by the name of Sonny Fox. He was an American television host and executive. He, he was there and, you know, he spoke about it and that really got the word out. And he was recognized on February 10th, Master Sergeant Roddy. 2015, as righteous among the nations, which is Israel's highest honor for non-Jews who risked their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust, they said, Edmund seemed like an ordinary soldier, but he had an extraordinary sense of responsibility and dedication to his fellow human beings. And by the way, Master Sergeant Roderick Waring Edmonds is the only soldier to ever receive this award. How about that? What a hero. What a hero. So Roddy's son Chris has been seeking to have his father's bravery recognized with the Medal of Honor, and there's been a lot of resistance, and it's been going on for a long time, and there are good people, there are good people that are working to get that accomplished, and we're gonna talk about it all here, because we are at his grave, which is right down here. You can see the U.S. Army flag, or banner, I should say. We have a flag down. We'll have to fix that. Let's take a look. So this is the family plot marker. And there's some flowers that go in here. And there's a flag. Well, there's a hole. Gosh, there's a hole. There's a metal bar down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the camera down. Hold on a second. See if we can just, how quick I can do this without making too much of a fuss. All right, I don't have a hammer, but the, the ground doesn't seem to be, oh, it's a big rebar. It's a big rebar, nice. So, let's put it, let's see, hold on a second. Maybe we'll put it over here. It's the winds, I don't want the wind to hit this thing. Well, let's put it right here. All right, that's much better, guys. That's much better. All right, so that's the family plot marker. And this is the grave of Roddy W. Edmonds, Master Sergeant. And I see here is his wife, Marianne, who passed literally just over a year ago, a couple years ago, I should say. 2020, oh, man, it's a wreath, I'm sure they all come here, it looks like it's been a while, that looks better, so let me tell you what's going on here, I'm going to step back a little, 
can see Old Glory in the wind. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Well, unfortunately, the initial position of the U.S. Army has been that because he was a captive and eh, therefore ineligible because his actions were not in combat. And we get it, but come on. There are deviations and exceptions in all rules, aren't there? When it's really, really over the top. <laughs> so to overcome this BS on March 20, sorry, but it makes me angry. On March 23rd, 2016, the U.S. House of Representatives put together a new bill, the Roddy Edmonds Congressional Gold Medal Act bill. Purpose was to recognize him with the Congressional Gold Medal and one of the two, which is one of the two highest civilian awards in the United States, along with the Presidential Medal of Freedom and it was referred to committees and subcommittees and then it finally went to the U.N. Senate and the bill was introduced to have him honored with the medal and blah 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 you know it just kinda nothing's really happening and the effort was renewed last April last year as the Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds Congressional Gold Medal Act it's a companion bill and that was introduced to the U.S. Senate. And all we hear are crickets. Guys, what do you hear? Crickets. Nothing. Come on, guys. Come on, people. Really? So let's see what happens here. And, you know, from the channel, I hope the word gets out, Let's all write a letter, especially the people here from Knoxville. That's what I'm calling for. I'll tell you, I, I really wish I knew my history better. And I knew the, his story back in the 1970s, back when I was in high school. And, you know, I wasn't into history then, but I really wish I could have met him. And his son, Chris, you're a lucky guy. Chris wrote a book. It's called... No Surrender. I've not read it, but I'm going to buy it. And if you're interested, just for convenience, I will put the link down in the description box. Just scroll down. I'm not, I don't know Chris. I'm not getting any markups. Just if you want to get it. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get this done. Politicians, lawmakers, come on, let's get this done. For Roddy and his legacy, the family. Don't you think he deserves it? Anyway. Marianne and Roddy W. Edmonds, rest in peace.